الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Abu Hurairah who narrates that the Prophet وسلم, said that on every person's joints or small bones every day there is a sadaqah that doing justice between two people is sadaqah helping a man to his mount or lifting his belonging up to it is sadaqah that a good word is sadaqah that every step you take towards prayer is sadaqah and that removing harmful things from pathways is sadaqah and in this hadith and many hadith like it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is reminding us of our responsibilities towards the people around us towards our communities our responsibilities of little things that we should be cognizant of in our day-to-day -day activities. That the way in this hadith is phrased is he is saying that it is obligatory, he is saying that it is necessary for us to perform these small acts every day, consistently. And so what I want to talk about is what are the rights and responsibilities that we have towards each other? What are the, right, what are the responsibilities that we have towards our communities? towards our parents, towards different things in this life. And so today what I want to focus on is what are our responsibilities towards our fellow Muslims as one part of this topic of what are our responsibilities towards different things. And this is something to be cognizant of that in my day-to-day -day interactions, how am I treating my brothers and sisters? that how am I treating the people around me? Am I treating them in the best of ways that as the Prophet wasallam said that none of you believe until you uh, want for your brother what you want for yourselves? That are we living up to this ideal that the Prophet wasallam has set for us? That it is narrated in Al-Bukhari that the Prophet wasallam said that the rights of one Muslim upon another are five. Returning the greeting of Salam visiting the sick, attending funerals, accepting invitations, and saying Yarhamakullah to one who sneezes. And I'll start with uh, say, replying to Salam. That it's sunnah to say Salam to your fellow Muslim, but it is actually fard to reply to that Salam. Wajib. To think wajib to reply to that Salam. To think about what that means is that how often do I see my brother on the street? How often do I see another Muslim as I'm passing by and I forget to exchange this greeting of salam? Because what is a greeting but a way to initiate a conversation between two people, a way to you know, in, build relationships between two people? That it's important for us to keep in contact with our brothers and sisters and to maintain that relationship between each other. But the Prophet wasallam, it was said of him that no one used to smile as much as he did. That smiling at a person is a, considered a form of sadaqah as well. That when we go and come to a masjid, that when I come somewhere, I should not only say salam to the people who I normally interact with, but I should be greeting people, everyone. I should not be greeting only some people and not greeting other people. But that having this connection with every single Muslim in my community is something that's important for me to have. And the other things that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, all of the things that are responsibilities of one Muslim upon another, one thing that they have in common is this idea of empathy. This idea of being with a person in their hardest of times and in their best of times. That when they're sick or when you have to attend their funeral, or when you're attending their invitation to their gatherings. And everything in between, that even the smallest of details, that saying, Yerhamakullah to one who sneezes, may Allah have mercy on you, seems like such a small thing. But such an attention to detail we are even commanded to have in regards for how we love our brothers in Islam. And the common thing that unites these, one of the things that unites these is the idea of empathy. This idea of being able to see things 
from another person's perspective and feel from their perspective. That I should be able to feel what my brother is going through and I should respond to them in that way. That to give an example of this, there was a Sahaba by the name of Abdullah. And Abdullah was an alcoholic. And oftentimes he would get so drunk that he would come staggering through the streets and have to be brought before the Prophet ﷺ for punishment. And one day when this was happening and he received his punishment, one of the people in the gathering, he said, Oh Allah, curse him for how often he is brought here for this. Oh Allah, curse him. And upon hearing this, the, I mean, the Prophet ﷺ, he could have done many things. He could have just ignored it and kept going. He could have agreed, he could have said, yeah, curse him because he is drunk and drinking is haram and so on. But in that moment, he understood the perspective, he understood what his companion was going through. And his response was, do not curse him. For by Allah, I know that he loves Allah and his messenger. And to understand why he said such a thing, that when this alcoholic is brought before the Prophet ﷺ, that he refuses to say anything bad about him, but actually is kind of giving him motivation, is to understand that what this person is going through, he understands that he's trying, and his intention is in the right place. And that if he were to put him down, or to demean him, or whatever, it would possibly put him in the wrong direction. It would make it harder for him. In another narration, he says that do not help the shaitan against him. That when we motivate each other, when we encourage each other towards good things, part of that is understanding what each other is going through and not putting them down for their faults. That Muslims are not people, we should not be people who, who exaggerate the faults of others, who constantly are pointing out the faults of others and making them feel bad. But on the contrary, we should be making each other feel good and encouraging each other towards good deeds. And the wisdom in which the Prophet ﷺ did this was that he understood who he was talking to. He didn't talk to the different people in the same way, but he talked to people in a way that they would understand, in a way that was relevant to where they were coming from. That his compassion for how he treated his companions was so much that even children and among his companions, he set aside time for to dedicate to them. That there was a companion by the name of Abu Umair, and he was a child who they used to refer to him as Abu Umair. And he had a parrot, he had a pet parrot named An Nughair. And one day, uh, this child, his parrot passed away. And the Prophet, he noticed, uh, you know, he noticed on his face the sadness that he was sitting on the side. And the Prophet ﷺ, he walked up to him and he says, Ya Abu Umair, what happened to an That even despite how busy this man was and despite how many people this man had to engage with, that he, his compassion was such that he would set aside time even to ask this boy about his pet. That that was the level of cognizance he had about his companions that he was able to see what was going on in this person and ask about something that would be seemingly so small but is so big if you think about it. Now that's empathy. Understanding that something that may seem small to us may be something big to someone else. It's something that we have to be aware of in our relationships with others. How we treat each other as Muslims. There has to be that empathy and compassion in our interactions. Because that's the prophetic example that we are given. The last hadith I'll mention is that the Prophet wasallam he always used to look for the best in people. And this extended to everyone. Even when there was no doubt that people were beyond hope. That when the Prophet wasallam he went to Ta'if to spread the message of Islam, that he later said about this day that it was, one of the, that it was the hardest day that he had. That the people harassed him so much that they would throw rocks at him and put things in his pathway and attacked him so much that the blood was all the way on his feet and it would, it would get stuck to his shoes, his soles. That it was so hard for him on that day that he, he, made, he put his hands to the sky and, and made dua. And the angel came to him and said, I'm the angel of the mountains. And if you want, 
if you say the word, I will destroy these people, regarding the people of Taif. And in that moment when the Prophet ﷺ was at his weakest, in his most difficult point after he had been so badly harassed, he said, no, because I hope that from their future, uh, you know, down the line, there will be people who believe. That not only did he see the best in people, but he saw the best in the future outcomes. That he was always looking for the best. It's something that we should be cognizant of in how we interact with others. Because it, the Prophet ﷺ could at that moment have chosen to destroy these people. But from the people of Ta'if there eventually came Muslims. And moreover from the people of Ta'if came the, the, the group, the emissary that eventually went to the South Asian subcontinent and spread Islam there. That something so small can lead to something so big. So we should be cognizant of how we are having empathy and compassion in our interaction with our brothers and sisters and how we are not forgetting our responsibilities and rights towards them.